case so today as we as we talking so today i'm gonna i'm gonna start with a set of things based on the, your your opinion yeah we're gonna skip that one so today everything is a pretty simple and then it's a quite straightforward to understand that so maybe it's up to you to to study those things and then maybe you can check or google some to get to that topic sorry i'm not yeah. getting you there sorry hmm? i'm not getting you clearly Could you say again? I'm not getting you clearly. I'm not getting you clearly. There is some uh, background noise. I don't know where it's from my end, but I'm not getting you clearly. So you want to cover the that? Do you want me to cover the that? Let's go the that topic. Or... No, I mean I'm not getting. I'm not hearing you clearly. Uh, you, you cannot. You cannot hear me clearly. Yeah, yeah, I can't hear you clearly. <laughs> Can you hear me clearly now? No, it's still there's still some noise. Okay, hold on. Because uh, my background my background noise can be the high, so uh hold on, let me okay here. Yeah now, now I get can it. you yeah, okay. Okay, now okay, I can, can you hear me clearly now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, so today I'm gonna I'm gonna cover the chapter six about the how to how to load in the you know the the actual data set by using the pandas. Okay. And then okay, let's start then. So 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 chapter six is more about the kind of, we already covered about the basic function about the data frame and series into, uh, in Python by using using pandas package. And then uh, chapter six is gonna be covered about the, okay, we can try to load in the actual file and then how we can processing those files. So it is actually called parsing. As you can see here, the parsing is about the, some of the reading the, reading the some different type of the file and then uh, try to make it organized and structured so that we can use the further analysis so reading the writing data actually actually text for me usually like a csv file or maybe dat or maybe txt file gonna be the example and then uh, this file actually read can be read about the by using the read csv file read, read the csv function in here actually it says about the pandas but the thing is uh, we actually do the like a pd read csv and then we can put the file name path in here and then other than the csv we can also read in the excel or html json and ses and uh ses and spss or SQL language or state, et cetera. So all different types of the file can be readable by using the pandas package, okay? And then whenever we get the, whenever we actually read the CSV file right here, it looks like uh, what, what, what we usually see in the data frame, right? Data, Python data frame with the, with the index name as a row and then a column name at the top right and then also this cat like a concatenate function is a kind of a just kind of a printing it, it is a kind of function for the printing the raw data but when you're using the lead csv it actually reading about the data frame like a like a column and low, okay? And then we have an indexing number in here, right? And then here is the value. So these are the basic form. And then we can also have a lot of option like a, like a R, it is a header function or sometimes we can actually designate the names 
And also we can setting up the name, column name first, and then uh, insert index those name gonna be used can be indexing package right here. Or maybe we can also have a, in case of the hierarchical indexes, that means that we have a multiple keys in here, like a one and two gonna be the first key. And then a second under the each first key, there is a four different, another different column, another different col uh, index organization. This is what is called the hierarchical index structure. Yeah, it's a kind of a table. Another another example of a table that allows us to do that. Actually, R does not have uh, these kind of approaches because uh, usually R tends to be have a uh, one key kind of indexes as a multiple column as a kind of another indexes for the as a separate column. And also in here, like uh, by using the separator function, like like we already know about the CSV. We can also designating about the, this separate function by using the, what is called a regular expression. You can Google that if you want to check on the what the regular expression is about. Because a regular expression is a kind of a very useful kind of a grammar uh, languages that, uh, that allows us to the extract the, some part of the data set based on the that data set attributes. So especially this one is a very useful when you try to web scrapping the text or text data, especially. So that's the thing. And then also in here, when you're looking at the, this kind of a text file, like a CSV file, we can actually have a, a lot of a, a lot of a, uh, unnecessary text here. Like a, this is the line zero. Line one, line two, line three, right? So it's a kind of a law. So we don't need this kind of information for the table. So in that case, we can actually setting up the this skip row function, and then we can skip it. Like uh, it is also has the same function in R. And also we whenever we have a like a missing value kind of things, we can also customizing the those missing value, like a low value here, like a NAM value. Or maybe you can keep this one gonna be false, gonna be the it's not available kind of things, like empty things or something, okay? And then also the same thing for the default NA, it's a false and then the NA value is NA. That means we can, whenever we read the things and then we have a lot of function to customizing this kind of, uh, uh, when we importing the, this table. And also in here, like uh, whenever we have a different NA, different NA Sentinel can be specified, each column in a di uh, dictionary. So that means maybe whenever we, uh, we have a, uh, something based on the this dictionary file. And then we can actually use the Sentinel like a pool or NA as a kind of a messages. And also keep default gonna be the force, gonna be we have uh, this kind of outcome. Like a something happen, like a, like a, like a two, yeah. for the pool or NA, like this too. Okay. And then, and then those are the kind of a list of the arguments we can actually using when we try to use the read CSV file. There is actually, again, there is a lot of a function and then a just previous example, just kind of a highlighting the uh, basic functions like a separation and delimiter and header functions, or define the indexing column or name, or skip row function, or NA value, gonna be another one, like a keep default NA for the missing, missing dealing with the missing value. And also maybe, uh, maybe converters, or uh, iterator gonna be also, you have to look at. And then uh, some yeah, of the and even the... functions, yeah. Uh, even the day, like the day, the day, the day, the day first, 
I think that's also uh, interesting. Yeah, sure. Yeah, the, the, yeah the just a feel free to yeah, just a feel free to look at the this table for the for your references whenever you need something and then you can feel free to reading these things and then uh using using those ops those arguments when you try to import in the data set. Okay. Yeah, sure. And then also and also here is a kind of a reading text by in pieces. That means maybe if you have a large file, maybe you can actually setting up the compact function like the options display max low is the one on uh, 10. That means you own whenever you get the result, you you only get the uh maybe some of the some of the top like the first, maximum rows. The first ten, the first ten, the first five and the last five. Yes. Yeah. So that's the kind of things. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then also also another thing is that you can also detonating the number of rows, like uh, how many rows you wanted to see in the CSV file, and also chunk size gonna be the kind of a kind of a you can only want to read some specific part of the part of the data set. You can actually limiting the that data size by using the chunk size. And then and then after yeah, I, I think, that sorry, not to not yeah. to cut you, but I think this is this is very interesting, especially if you're working with like a huge, let's say you have a data set with let's say uh half a million rows, you know. This could be very useful. Yeah, that's the very useful for the when you have a big data, but yeah, it sure. is a help if whenever you have a, some of the problem with the memory or maybe yeah, it even, takes even, too, even for too long. Yeah, because if, if the, the, the data is too much and your, your hard drive is not very huge, then it takes a, a long time. And then your computer will start to like get very, very slow. You know, so this chunk chunk size thing, I think it's quite interesting. Yeah, correct. Because uh, yeah, even if this one is a uh, very very interesting for the uh, people who has uh, some of the lack of the computing power, machine into the into the local computer machine, maybe in that case this is gonna be useful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially large data size. And then and then whenever you have a uh, have a uh, uh, so far we actually thinking about the how how we can reading the database, right? The CSV file or text format. But there is also a function for the writing the data to the text format, like a, in R, like a write table or write CSV function. It is also the same. So whenever we read the, these things, we can also try to do the these two CSV me method. We can actually export the, this one as a CSV right here okay and then by using by designating the path and the file name and then uh, this one is the, our object of the data set we're gonna export as a csv file and then we can get the, this file by using the two csv method or maybe you can also do the same thing like a uh, um uh, like other delimiter gonna be used. So maybe importing the sys package, like a module, and then you can actually detonating the this separator, like uh, this one, like a little uh, particular bar. And also you can also try to set up the function for the NA representative gonna be the null. So that means uh, every missing value has the, this null kind of uh, uh, outcome by determined by you, like the users. And then uh, also maybe like we did for the right table in R, we also try to do the low name, like an indexing name gonna be false. That means we don't have any indexing gonna be exported to the CSV or header is false gonna be the, we don't have any headers. Yeah, it can be possible to do that, okay? And also in here, like index is false, and then a column gonna be also we can 
we can try to uh, try to rename the column whenever we export the TA, uh, CSV file. Okay, that's yeah. the how this one is about. Okay. Yeah, the, so, the chapter is quite interesting. Yeah, it's just yeah. that I mean, I mean, the chapter is interesting. It's just that his his examples are, I mean, how I call it. It would have been better if he uses real, real, real world data. <laughs> mm. yeah, yeah, right. But you can try it if you want to, cause uh, that's the your job. Cause uh, this one is uh, just kind of a uh, showing the very good example and then how it actually works. That's the focus of the this examples. Not the maybe it might be much better if they can actually handle the real data set, but. Maybe based on the this information, you can also feel free to importing the some of the real data, and then you can yeah, sure, try sure, sure. by yourself. Yeah. Sure. So, and then also the next one is the working with other other delimited formats. So that means we also have another form, another another R uh, Python package called CSV module. Here, this one is another thing we can use. So whenever we have a op uh, open, open is actually a uh, Python basic function to, to get the path information to access to the data set. And then uh, by using the leaders method, and then uh, we can detonating the this one as an F here, and then we can actually reading it. But the thing is that this one does not actually showing about the data by itself, okay? Not the data itself. It just a kind of a assigned assigned memory memory uh memory uh addresses to allow you allow access to the data, you know what I'm saying? So this one does not actually tell you about the, actually show you about the, whenever, whenever you, you actually just simply, simply type the reader and enter, you do not have any, any data information. This one is only give you about, only give you about the detonating like a uh, address memory address location that uh, directs you to the where is the data set is at into the computer memory okay computer storage memory especially so to read uh, those one we had to do that read those things by by line by line okay That's the reason why we have uh, this kind of function. For line in reader, and then print line means we have uh, every row information like this. And then, and then what is the very important thing is uh, whenever you open the this one, okay? And then uh, when you're done with the file, you must close the that file without this function. Data set still, still remains and stays into your memory. So that means sometimes it, if you uh, export the too many data set like this way, without and then we you you if you do not close closing the those file after using it using them, your computer gonna be getting slow. Okay. Because it's still without closing the each file, it's still existing into the your computer RAM memory, and then uh, that still occupy your computer uh, storage or memory RAM. That actually uh, preventing the the other data set to using the your computing power in full. Okay, that's the kind of thing. So this one is actually another way you can do, but this one is a more like a basic function. You can do by using the Python basic function, but now we have a pandas packages. So I think that pen you just using the pandas packages as you can see in the previous 
example gonna be much better, okay? That's the kind of thing. And then in here, also you can setting up the this kind of a dialects. What, is, what does that dialects, dialects means? Whenever we have uh, some of the CSP importing options, you can detonate at, at once like this as a class. And then you can using that that customizing the customizing class as an argument like here. And then all of the these options are gonna be reflected when you're reading the this data set. So you can define all of the importing option first as a class, and then reading those things, when reading those things when you importing the CSV file like this, okay? Yeah. So this kind of a CSV dialect can be have uh, this kind of a function and as you can see in the table, like a uh, CSV options. So, so this one is a kind of a way you can do about the coding or some line terminator or delimiter like this. So, these are the kind of uh, functions you can do. Yeah, and I'm, also, I'm not... okay, okay, sorry. Yeah, have any question? No, I, I mean, like for me, uh, uh, when I'm working with CSV, most of this, like most of these things, before, like before, let's say before um, importing the data in R, let's say, because most of the time I work with R. So I, I try to do all the adjustments in Excel. Like the 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 the, the, the basic data cleaning, like this stuff, any characters that are not really, I don't want it in my data set. I just do all that in in Excel, then I import the data. But this is this uh, CSV dot dialect. I think it's quite uh, useful, you know. Yeah. I think it's quite. Also, you can yeah you can do that yeah do that yeah whenever you using the whenever you feel comfortable. Yeah, you can use the Excel to clean up the data set in Excel first. And then after cleaning those things in Excel, you can, yeah, you can feel free to uh, feel free to import in the, those already cleaned up the data set into Python or R for the further analysis. Yeah, it is, uh, there is actually no right answer about the, no, no, I about mean, the I how mean, to, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I provide like that because uh, let's say I find, I find that much easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, it's up to you. Cause, uh, like I said, there is a no right answer. There is a no sure. right answer sure. about sure. about how to how to clean up the data set, uh, perfectly or or structurally, systematically. Everyone, everyone has the, their own. Uh, everyone has his own way Perfect, of yeah. the manipulating the yeah data set. They yeah. based on the their experience or their convenience or depending on the their level of knowledge about the data analysis, you know? Sure, or sure. sometimes data size or data context, or yeah. or sometimes sometimes what is the data is about or what depending on the what type of the data set we usually do, or what is our research context, et cetera. Depending on that, there is a, a lot of ways we can do. There is a no single way of the manipulating or processing data. Even no. yeah, and also sometimes even if sometimes if if you even if you can feel comfortable using the Excel for the data processing, but the the problem about the Excel is you can only only imp uh, loading the data set if uh, we we up to up to one million rows, okay. If you have uh, more than like a 100 or uh, 1.2 million rows, Excel cannot read in the whole data set. Okay. Excel has the limitation. Yeah, it has some limitations. Some, yeah, Excel, Excel actually have a spread limitation. Okay. Yeah, sure. When you, when you try to try to do the, that Excel seed, Excel sheet can be reading up to the 1.1 million rows 
and then about a thousand, about less than a thousand rows, uh, columns. I think there is about 500 rows, I guess. So it's, it has the limitations. So that means if you have a table with a, a table with a more than 1.1 million rows, that means Excel cannot read the whole data set. So in that case, you cannot clean up the whole data set in Excel. So in that case, you have to use in other way, like a Python or R or maybe SPSS or Statar, depending on the, your, what kind of software you can use. So, sure. yeah. So you have to, yeah, thinking about it. So even if, even if you can, or what I wanted to say is hmm. first, there is a no single way to manipulating the data. And second one is the, you also need to be very flexible about the manipulating the data set. Cause uh, if you have a too large data, too big data set you have to deal with, that means you also thinking about the another way, uh, the other way of the dealing with the data set more efficiently or compute uh, more systematically. Yeah. 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 And sometimes it is also there is a situation that uh, maybe maybe your sponsor your sponsor only using the SPSS as a soft their software. What you have to do, even if you yeah, can, yeah. for you are familiar with the R. Your sponsor, your research sponsor, prefer to using SPSS for the analysis or data cleanup. You have to prepare you you have to prepare your data set as an SPSS. Sure. That is sometimes have a situation. That is actually my experience. So so that's the kind of a, a lot of a things gonna be happen. So the second second one that I wanted to tell you is there is a no single way. And second one is that you have to be flexible, even if you have a your own way of the dealing with the data set. Okay, so next one is the is the dealing with the JSON JSON data. JSON data is another type of the standardized format, data format, right? It is more like a, this kind of a diction Python dictionary like a formatting. Okay, and then. And then how we can read this? We can using the JSON Python module. And then we can using the road method and then object. Like like this, like this one, for example. And then we can get the result like this. And then and then also another one is the we can also uh, Converting the Python object back to the JSON by using the this dumps option, and also we can converting those things as a data frame like this. Result is the siblings, so sibling is the name scart age thirty four, right? And then a column is only get the name and age, not the hobbies. So that's the reason why we have a, this kind of a database. Okay. And then, and then also, uh, another thing we can do is the we have a pandas function for the read JSON function here. And then that one actually convenient. Uh, we can actually export the that JSON file more convenient way. Okay. And then the next one gonna be another file. We also have a situation to clean up the data is the what is called the XML or HTML, which is the web scrapping, okay, here. So that means we, whenever we looking at the, some, some maybe some websites, websites or something, there is a lot of a way or situations we can also thinking about the, how we can importing the data table shown in the web page or maybe text or some numbers 
into the web pages, how we can export uh, importing those data set, extract the, those data set, and then uh, making them into the some of the data frame in Python in this case. So that's the kind of a, what web scrapping is about. But what I before I explain about the, this one, what I really wanted to emphasize to tell you is web scrapping the web page is the highly ethical kind of issues. Okay. Web copyrights, copyrights of the web page is actually up to the creator who actually create the dead contents, right? The dead creator has the rights to the edit or share or permission to give you the permission to the access to the, those data set. So before you try to web scrapping some web pages, first thing you have to do is you need to be very ethical to, to do the web scrapping. What does that mean is every time you need to extract some data set from the some specific website, you have to check the you have to check the copyright issues. First. And also if there is a, some of the copyright issue comes up, that means you must contact contact the contact the person for permission to use okay this tool is very very important by by using the like uh, in here like uh, in case of the beautiful soup or lxml or python library you can web scrapping anything you know, whenever you find Google and finding the some table, maybe from the web pages, it is very easy to web scrapping it. But the thing is, like I said, when before you try to do the web scrapping something, you have to check the these two issues first. Without yeah. it, you have uh, some of the very serious legal problem without permission to using the, those copyrighted or confidential data set uses. So it is very unethical and also it is sometimes very illegal when you access to the data set by using the web swapping without the permission to the to the old. In here, it actually give you about the, these kind of uh, packages like uh, LXML, and beautiful soup four and then HTML5 library. Personally, beautiful soup is a kind of a packages I used before. And then this one is a very good and convenient option that allows you to access to the HTML or XML kind of a web page document and then easy to extract the, some specific data set or specific uh, text or data from the, those web pages. So in here, like like this, like a pandas function also give you about the HTML reading function and then uh, by default, read HTML method, method only try to read the table when, if there is a table in it. And then that table gonna be by reading the, those table as a list from the list as a failure. And then you can reading the those table like this. And then you can also try to try to uh, define the some of the date time kind of things. And then DTE year value counts can be possible to do the counting the sum of the date by the year, the closing date. Okay. That's the how you can do about the things. So, so this one actually allows you to the counting the number of data record by year, right? 
And then uh, parsing the XML is the more a little bit complicated because the XML is the a little bit more secure kind of a web documents. And then uh, whenever you're looking at the, those XML, you can have uh, these kind of a little bit complicated kind of uh, information with the uh, with uh, all of the these HTML uh languages in here, right? So in these cases. You can actually uh what is called objectify these kind of XML packages based on the parsing, parsing uh functions. And then you can you can create the empty data first. And then a uh, skip field is a kind of a defined field. You don't need to using it. And then also you can have a parse and then a get root is the kind of a information about the this web pages uh web pages elements and then by using the these kind of four functions you can reading the those xml document by line by the line okay and also whenever you have a children data set it this one is a root indicator and then a children children indicator and then if tag is the skip field so that means the children in elements children and elements in here, like uh, these things has does not, ha we have uh, these kind of elements, that means we have to skip it here. Continue means we can skip it and then uh, get the next line. And then uh, whenever we get the data set, we can, we can value gonna be recorded as a database. And then this data base gonna be appended to the data object. Here, actually, this kind of algorithm is the used uh, frequently used also in R. Even if in R, we still have the same approaches. Get uh get the information about the XTML pages information, and then uh we actually keep the for loop to get the each line and line line information, and then get the value from the those by uh, leading the line by line kind of information. And then try to making the each value to the data and then appending it as a, our final final data objects. And then when you try to do the converting to the this, this one as a data frame, you can get the all of the this web scraping outcome, okay? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the explanation. Yeah. 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 So that's the kind of you know how we can using the web pages because uh, web scraping is uh, actually very very advanced technique and then uh, it is actually very complicated and then uh, it is a uh, very hard to explain just only for this section because uh, when you looking when you whenever you uh, you Google the any web pages and then uh, click the function app to uh, function twelve. You can see the that web page documentation, uh, HTML and CSS language information in in Chrome or maybe uh edges, Internet Internet Explorer edges, you know. So. But the thing is, the how you can extract the, some specific part of the uh web or uh, part of the elements and uh, components from the web page is actually require you to understand the understand the how how HTML or CSS CSS uh language is gonna be used or created uh used to the create the web pages, which is the Another requirement to understanding the HTML and CSS uh, gra uh, uh, language, language grammar. Okay. Here is actually give you about the, some of the very, very basic, very simple example about the, how you can get the, those outcome. Okay. So maybe if you think you need to. Uh, digging a little bit further about the web scrapping to the HTML or XML or CSS sometimes, you 
you have to be looking at, you have to be check out the, some of the HTML languages or XML documents. Or maybe you can maybe check out the, some of the web scrapping uh, technical documents in Python. Because uh, there is a lot of a uh, separate book uh, that uh, that give you about the information about the, how you can web scraping the web pages in Python or R, et cetera. Okay. Yeah, I think in R, when I was reading the, the, the R for DS book, it uh, the, the chapter on web scraping was quite interesting. Yeah, even the yeah. R, for, R for data science book does yeah. not have a uh, whole information. Because uh, there is uh, sometimes a situation that uh, maybe when you get the table, but that table does not have a full information. Like uh, at the bottom, there is the there is the pages about the table information. So this one is the first table and second table gonna be whenever you click the second button, next button, you can get the next information, right? Mm. In that case, is you have to thinking about the how you can get the whole entire data set when when there is a situation about the, those tables. Okay. In that case, is there is a other way you can do to get the get the whole information. So there is a lot of a, a different variation about the getting the how you can extract the, some data set from the web pages. And then uh these things you if you wanted to understand the, these kind of technique, you have to mm -hmm. looking at the, those web scrapping book. There is uh, some some books about the web scrapping, not other than I for data science or book one. Both both book actually deal with a very very simple basic way of doing it. What does that mean? Is uh, you have a single web pages, and then you just uh, those book only give you about the information, give you t uh, uh, give you about, about explain to you about the, how you can get the get the information from the that single pages only. If you have a multiple yeah. web pages to you look at, there is a different way to do that. Yeah, yeah, I I get your point. I get your point. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the kind of thing, and then uh now is the twelve forty seven, and then I think that we have to stop here, cause uh. Binary data format is the a little bit longer. And then I can do the the other half of the chapter six in the next week. Okay. Let me click that.